our Lord, our God, in you we live and move and have our being. The beginning and the end. We come from our homes and places of work to worship you. We carry into this service our background. The loved ones we represent. Our ancestors whose genes and nature we inherit. Our hands and hearts are unclean and ill-prepared. Yet you are the compassionate God who in Jesus Christ brings wholesomeness to our lives. Gently mend what is broken and when the world shines our appearance, help us still know our inner beauty through the Spirit dwelling in us. Amen. Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. We are back again and we want to thank God for giving us this opportunity that we can still worship Him. We want to thank God for allowing you also the opportunity to listen to the message. May God bless you. Amen. I'm going now to <clears throat> ask Brother Ben to come and do the reading of the Word of God, coming from 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 to 17. Please pay attention to the reading of the Word of God. Praise God and good morning. I uh, hope your focus has been on the Lord this week and it's been a blessed week. Uh, really excited to hear what Johnson's going to be speaking on today and want to remind you there's a heap of other messages uh, on YouTube that you can listen to, go back through and if there's any you've missed or if you've seen none, uh, it's a good repository to uh, get in and Hear, hear what God's put on Johnson's heart. As he mentioned, uh, we'll be reading from 2 Kings 5, 1 to 17. And it's about Naaman healed of leprosy. Now Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram he was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who was in Samaria, he would cure him of leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending my servant Na Naaman to you, so that you can may cure him of leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the men come to me have the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horse and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a message to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call in the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. And not Abana and Farpa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman, Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, some great thing, would you not have done it? 
how much more then when he tells you to wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God told him, and his flesh was restored, and he became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. So pleased, so please accept a gift from your servant. The prophet answered, As surely as the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not accept the thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. If you will not, said Naaman, please let me, your servant, be given as much earth as a pair of mules can carry, for your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other god but the Lord. This is the word of the Lord this week. Praise God. Uh, powerful how God has moved in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. And uh, we'll get Johnson back to share his word this week. Can't wait to hear it. Johnson. Uh, this, this morning, I have decided to share with you on the theme, what man can't buy. What man can't buy. Naaman was the commander of the army of the king of Aram or Assyria. He was a good, upstanding, and righteous man. He was a great warrior who had fought and won many battles and thus earned the respect of his master. But he had one problem which plagued him and caused him to be an outcast. He was a leper and he needed a cure. He was a great man like many great men, with a flaw. He was a fearless warrior who bore the telltale marks of the infirm and afflicted. After asking his king if he could go and see the prophet Elisha, he was granted permission and set out on his journey with ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. As a respectable gentleman, warrior, he would pay for his medicine. He would give the prophet monetary reward for service rendered. Notwithstanding his desire to pay the prophet, Naaman would still realize that he wouldn't receive something that man could not buy. Man did not buy a servant's disclosure of someone who could heal Naaman's leprosy. He did not buy that one. How paradoxical that a servant girl captured in one of the raids of the Armenians would approach Naaman's wife with information about a prophet who could cure her husband's leprosy. This information was undoubtedly unsolicited. The servant girl was captured in battle. She was a vanquished spoil of conquest. She didn't have to share her knowledge about Elisha's healing powers. She could have easily kept such knowledge to herself. As the pro part of the conqueror, yet bitterness could have prompted her to bask in Naaman's misery. Watching Naaman suffering, and she would say, yes, you need to suffer because they've captured me. But she did not do that. As retribution of being taken captive and being powerless to redress her condition, she could have watched him suffer day by day, delighting in his affliction and viewing it, it as a kind of perverse payback for taking her as a prisoner. However, empathy and compassion provoked her to share what she knew with Naaman's wife. All the man in the world could not buy this valuable information. She had information that will save someone's life. That information you would not have to pay. You don't need a library card to go to get that information. All the man in the world could not have compelled the seventh girl to come forward with an answer to the suffering of a fellow human being. Naaman no doubt would have gladly paid for such, but it was the kindness and goodness of a seventh girl that would change his life forever. Valuable information is traded for large sums of money in the world marketplace of ideas every day. If you know something, you are paid for that. People 
often give their life to receive a cure for disease or affliction. Sometimes valuable information comes to us which can save our lives and money cannot buy it. Sometimes such information comes from the most unpleasable sources. It comes visually and solicited. You don't look for it. It just comes. Sometimes you get information about maybe people who hate you. Not because they've asked it, but maybe you hear a conversation of people talking about you. Don't even they do not know who you are. You don't need to get that information. So the great cures of modern medicine have often come in this unexpected ma manner. Scientists and researchers labor for years for answers to life's most devastating, perplexing diseases, and then suddenly the answer comes. All the money in the world could not buy the answer, and it is only the grace of God that can give you that information for the answer to come by. Man did not buy the seventh girl. He did not buy it. Man did not buy a desire to end a master's suffering. Man did not buy a willingness to share valuable information which would ultimately save Naaman's life. Man did not buy a sympathy, empathy, and concern for other human beings. It did not come through money. I don't know, maybe later on, maybe Naaman tried to give her money. Or maybe they only give the sugar to done is to send it back to her own country. That's what I think would be the gift from Naaman. In this world of the Faustian power impulse, where people sell their souls to the devil on a whim of monetary pleasure, the fact that people are still willing to share something that man cannot buy gives us all hope. People are trying to get money by all ways, all means for them to get money. There is a vestige of people who will help others because it is the right and just thing to do. I remember I was working in one area, in one country, and just getting information to the place where I wanted to go. I was asked, how much are you going to give me? <laughs> Meaning, if I show you the place, you need to pay me something. That is what people are today. They are not seeking financial compensation. They are not looking to be paid, but they do it out of altruism, love and compassion for others. All the money in Ahmad's account could not have purchased such knowledge from the seventh girl. All the money that he had could not purchase such knowledge. Man did not buy the prophet's knowledge of healing. Elisha had the healing knowledge. Where did it come from? It comes from God. He did not buy it. We know from our reading on lepers that lepers were always in search of healing for their disease. As one of the most dreaded infirmities in ancient times, it often created social outracism and contempt. Lepers were colonized or quarantined in certain areas of city or town. Taboos against, against prolonged contact with lepers were very strong. That Naaman enjoyed his status as a great warrior is perhaps unusual for lepers. Since they were often isolated from other segments of the community. Thus we can surmise that Naaman, like other lepers of his time, was desperately in search of a cure for his malady. He was out there. After hearing about the prophet, he travels to him taking large amounts of money to pay for him service rendered. It is obvious that Naaman believed that Elisha would administer some hands cure on for him. That Elisha's intervention and decision would be personal. Naaman had already formulated in his mind method of healing Elisha would do, would prescribe or would show him. So the scripture says that Naaman believed Elisha would have his hand over the spot in 2 Kings 5 verse 11. Perhaps Elisha would dispense some mysterious herb, spice or balm by externally applying it to the skin of Naaman. Perhaps he would put Naaman under a spell or a trance and administer some internal portion. And after awaking from the days of sleep, you would be miraculously cured. It is obvious that Naaman had some idea in his mind of the prophet's method for curing. Otherwise, he would not have been so displeased with what he found on his arrival at the prophet's home. 
Upon his arrival, Naaman is deeply angered when the prophet would not even come out of his house to greet him, but to send someone, a servant of his, to say, please go and tell Naaman to go and wash seven times in the river Jordan. Without coming out of the door, not even, without even seeing the person. That is what we are told. He was insane and insulted that the prophet would dismiss him in such a frivolous and discourteous manner. What is this? I thought he would come out and wave his hand over the spot and call on the name of the Lord. Said the Naaman. He did not realize that the prophet knew something. That he was aware of the method of healing which surpassed all others. He had any knowledge about it. Naaman did not realize that the prophet was in possession of a deeper secret that man could not buy. A secret revealed only by the power and the spirit of a great and mighty God. It is only a secret revealed by God. Tell him to go deep in the Jordan River seven times, said Elisha. Enraged and pitched, Naaman went down to the Jordan River, immersed himself seven times and was cured. After being told by his own servants to say, if the prophet had told you to do great things, would you not do it? So why don't you listen to what the prophet is saying? His method is quite cheap, quite simple. Seven times, and you're okay. That's the way, what he was told to do. So I'm saying the prophet had come into a full awareness of the healing powers of the Jordan River. He could have only known this by the Spirit of God. The Spirit discloses knowledge of truth rarely possessed by human minds. Naaman could never have conceived of such a mundane core cure because it was revealed only to the prophet and men of God. This information was not revealed to those who are prime. This information was not revealed to those who are kings. That's why you find even the king of Israel, when he received the letter and read the letter, he tore his garments and he said, how could the king of Syria send me such a message? Does he think I'm a God? Does he think that I have life and death? Who is he that he sent all these things to me? So, which means this information would never be revealed to people you think they're educated. It is only revealed to simple people. By God only. Amen. The information was revealed to Elisha by God. It was a unique method of healing that could easily have been taken for granted. The apparent frivolity of the method is evident in Naaman's content and the suggestion to dip himself in the Jordan River seven times. This method of being cleansed and used was not a standard prescription for lepros. But it was a method of healing that man couldn't buy. That's why he's asking, don't we have good rivers in my area? We've got Puff as one of the rivers. What's so special about Jordan River? What's so special about this river? More to it, what's so special about this man who doesn't even come out to greet me? I'm a great warrior. I'm a leader. Why is he doing this? In a world where man buys virtually everything, even doctors with expert knowledge who can effect healing, is still, as in the case of Elijah and Naaman, could not buy a cure. Man would never buy a cure. Man did not buy the miracle of Naaman's healing, what occurred was essentially a miracle. Naaman's healing by dipping into the river Jordan was a great blessing. It was a great blessing. Perhaps he had passed through those waters as many of his disciples before him. The river Jordan has spiritual significance in the life of the Israelite people. It is a place of crossing over into the new land, a place of healing, a place of restoration, a renewal. The significance of that river in the life of the Israelites could not be taken for granted. It was a special thing for them. For this same reason, it also had been held in contempt, resulting from familiarity. It was a river that has always been there. It was taken for granted. Just like if you are being told, 
just to go maybe and take the leaves of a tree that you have been sitting there behind your backyard and you have been seeing this tree for so many years and someone says take these leaves and just use these leaves you'll be healed you look at them and say no 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 this tree has been there what could it have of any significance in it that is what it was it was taken for granted the people had crossed its border so many times and had become so familiar with it that some of it lost its symbolic and spiritual significance. This was probably true of Naaman, who was enraged at hearing of Elijah's suggestion. But the miracle occurred. The miracle occurred despite his contempt. Naaman did what he was told and he was cured of his leprosy. The miracle was of God. The prophet acted as an intermediate in that miraculous event, elated with his cure, Naaman offered Elisha man for his service, but was refused because the prophet did something that man could not buy. Man could not buy a cure. We understand that Naaman wanted to pay him as a token of appreciation for what Elisha had done. This was a perfect normal and good thing to do. But Elisha refused the man because deep down he had something that man could not buy. He had something that man could not buy. The deeper lessons of this text tells us that both Naaman and Elisha, something that man could not buy. Not that there was no personal intercession by the prophet on behalf of Naaman, but rather instructions and direction on what to do and where to go for the cure. Naaman's obedience to the prophet's command is equally something that man cannot buy. Obedience to the word of God is needed. That one man cannot buy. What you need is to obey what the word of God says. So the prophet gave the instruction and the land responded in spite of the reservations about those instructions. Thus man did not buy a servant's information. Man did not buy the prophet's knowledge of the cure. Man did not buy the miracle of the cure. Man did not buy Naaman's faith in doing what the prophet commanded. Can you see the things man did not buy? According, there are many things in this world that man, man cannot buy. Man cannot buy compassion, but man can buy friendship. Man cannot buy, can buy a physician, but man can't buy good health. Man can buy medical expertise, but man can buy cure for disease. Man can buy a house, but man can buy a home. Man can buy information, but man can buy knowledge. Man can buy solicit lawyers, but man cannot buy obedience. Man can buy good works, but man can buy faith. All those things we see. All the characteristics of this story are something that man cannot buy. The seven girl compassion, the wife of Naaman and loyalty, the prophet had knowledge, the river Jordan had the cure, Naaman had the willingness and faith to be healed. All of these things man could not buy. So it is so simple in this world that the things we look down upon, man cannot buy. You can't buy life. You can't buy life. It is refreshing to know that there are still things in this world man cannot buy. Elisha refused to the monetary paid for his service because of his relationship with God. And also because there are some things in life upon which monetary value cannot be placed. There is invaluable prizes things. The look on the face of a child has been healed. The smile of an elder who has been miraculously cured of cancer. The joy of a family in having a sick loved one restored. There is a realm of existence that is so profound and utterly amazing that we cannot put a prize on it. We cannot put a prize to man. The prophet Elisha was well aware that he had shared with Naaman could not be sold for a prize. Could not be bought at a prize. It is something deep within the human soul and the spirit which delights and rejoices in caring and sharing and helping others. It cannot be purchased at any cost. It cannot. In conclusion, this special something which runs from heart to heart and soul to soul is the love that God has for us and for all of others, which makes the difference in this life. We can all be instruments of God's healing for others, 
But that healing comes for a desire to heal and a willingness to be healed. This is something we can never put a price on because it is something that man cannot buy. Amen to that church. You can't buy love from people. You can't. You can't. May God bless you as you think upon these words. What man cannot buy, but it's for free. The word of God is for free. The gospel is for free. The gospel is for free. Take it or leave it. It's up to you. May God bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. God beyond our imagining, creator, lover, empower, and persuader, help us to see the possibilities to go on searching your inexhaustible, stunning universe to our minds as afraid and our hearts filled by the wonder of your love. We see that for you, nothing is impossible. And for us, much is possible. Then come, Lord, take our hands and lead us to do your work. Where your name is known, where your name is not known, because you are love, and we must care indiscriminately. Let us be willing to tell the information, to tell, to give a testimony of what God can do like this little slave girl we have the information about the prophet in Israel who could heal people if my master would go to the prophet in Israel he will be healed bless us father in your name I pray amen okay Brothers and sisters, I would ask you not that this gospel is being sold. The gospel is for free. But to give an appreciation of saying thank you, Lord. I didn't realize that the life that I have, I could not purchase it anyway. I didn't realize the things that I can do, I cannot buy them anyway. So I'm asking you to make or give a thanksgiving offering right now of thanking who God is. Let us thank God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that we realize that man cannot buy the things that are really necessary in our lives. The important things in our life, man cannot buy them. Bless this offering, Father, as we give it to you. In the name of the Father. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all.